In this program, we are going to follow along on an actual full-frame window replacement project from beginning to end, so you can see for yourself how to properly install an Anderson 400 series Woodwright window in a specific real-world situation. The first step in any window replacement project is a thorough assessment of the job at hand. This includes detailed interior and exterior assessments, accurate technical measurements, a water management strategy, and a plan for interior and exterior trim application. Once this assessment is made, a complete window replacement strategy can be presented to the homeowner. A thorough assessment is also critical to developing an accurate estimate and a problem-free installation plan. This can help avoid costly mistakes and callbacks. To make the process easier, Anderson offers a measurement worksheet to help you record all the pertinent information you'll need to accurately assess and estimate a job. Customer input is a crucial component of your assessment. When you meet with a customer, listen carefully to their goals for the project and take good notes. This homeowner wants to replace the old windows, but puts a high priority on maintaining the details of her 1920s Dutch colonial home. She wants to match the original interior and exterior trim details, as well as the style and proportions of the existing windows. We suggest, like this remodeler is doing, you take digital photos of the home's interior and exterior. Digital photos of the windows and trim details make it easier to recall the trim style later. After taking photos, start the assessment by carefully examining the existing windows. In this case, they're traditional wood double-hung windows with single-pane glass. They have divided lights in the upper sash, but not on the lower sash. The interior is painted white and trimmed with a traditional 3.5-inch wide board casing and back band. The stool is five-quarter material, and the center mullion casing is one inch wider than the casing at the side jams. These windows are difficult to open. There are also some windows with broken sash cords. Behind the wide board trim at the side jams and at the center mullion are uninsulated counterweight pockets that will need to be framed in and insulated. The exterior of the home has an overlay of new vinyl lap siding that the homeowners would like to leave undisturbed if possible. The first floor windows are flanked by decorative shutters that should also remain undisturbed. The flower boxes will need to be removed and replaced when the job is complete. New flashing will be fabricated to integrate with the existing siding and additional water management techniques incorporated into preparing the rough opening. This will help provide a weather-tight seal. In some cases, the water management strategy will require removal and replacement of existing exterior siding materials. The exterior casing consists of painted white board trim and back bands on the sides, a wide board center mullion, and a decorative crown molding across the top. The existing casing is in poor condition, requiring significant maintenance. The homeowners would like to replace it with a low-maintenance material similar to the new windows. Because of shrubbery and plantings, access to the exterior work area may be difficult. Noting this, the remodeler decides to include scaffolding in the work order. Once the assessment is complete, the next step is to take accurate measurements of the existing windows. The goal is to determine the exact rough opening size in order to specify the right replacement window unit. The most accurate measurement technique is to remove the existing trim and simply measure the rough opening. This method is also the most intrusive. Since most homeowners prefer that you not remove the trim, this method is not always an option. Be prepared to take accurate measurements using other methods if that's the case. One method involves locating or drilling an access hole in the side jam. In this example, there's an opening just above the sash pulley so no drilling is necessary. If no access hole is available, ask the homeowner for permission to drill a small hole through the side jam where it wouldn't show and plug it afterwards. Use a small wire such as a clipped coat hanger to measure the distance from the inside face of the side jam to the inside face of the rough opening framing member. Measure the width from the inside face of the side jam at the same point as your access hole to the inside face of the opposite side jam. 
Finally, use the wire to measure the other side jam pocket. Record these measurements on the measurement worksheet. The sum of these three dimensions equals the existing rough opening width. To take the vertical measurement, open the window and drill a small hole in the sill as close to the inside edge of the stool as possible. Again, use the wire to get a measurement from the top of the sill plate rough opening to the top of the window sill. Next, take a measurement from the top of the window sill, where the hole was drilled, to the inside face of the head jam. Finally, drill another hole through the head jam and use the wire to get the measurement between the inside face of the head jam and the bottom side of the existing window header. Keep in mind that in some older homes with balloon framing, there may not be a header, just a hollow cavity above the window. Record these three measurements and add them together to get the rough opening height. In the case of a twin unit, you'll need to find out how the mullion between the two windows is constructed. The goal is to find out if it's hollow or if there's a framing member between the two windows. By fishing the wire through the same small holes above the sash pulley, you can see that it goes straight through. This indicates that there is no framing material and the mullion is indeed hollow. You'll need to rebuild this mullion with some new framing material and then insulate. This will help reduce the air infiltration that has probably made the house feel drafty. Once you've made an interior and exterior site assessment that includes photos, taken accurate measurements, and discussed with your customer their goals for the project, you have enough information to develop and recommend a replacement window strategy. This homeowner clearly indicated that one of her main goals is to retain the original architectural style of her 1920s Dutch colonial home. A full-frame window replacement is the best way to achieve that goal. The Woodwright window's all-wood interior, thick sloped sill and tall bottom rail, and traditional side styles and check rail proportions are reminiscent of the style of windows that need to be replaced. After comparing your measurements with the 99 standard sizes available, you find a match in the Woodwright WDH2446. For projects where rough openings are not standard, Woodwright window custom sizes are available in 1 8 inch increments. And in addition to standard grill patterns, Anderson has custom grill pattern capability and four grill width choices. Specify the pre-painted interior option, since the rest of the woodwork in the house is white, and the homeowner specified white. The weight pockets and center mullion are hollow. Simply removing the existing window frame would expose a rough opening that could accommodate a larger window with more glass area. But since this homeowner's goal is to retain the proportions of the existing architectural details, the rough opening will need to be modified to replicate the look and proportions of the old windows. New flashing and additional water management techniques will be included in the process. New interior and exterior trim will be sourced to match the existing profiles. The exterior trim will be replaced with a low-maintenance product that doesn't require painting. The interior trim will be primed prior to application. Today, an installation crew will begin installing the first set of twin windows in the living room. They arrive on time, introduce themselves, and prepare their work area. Since this job takes place during the winter, they clear a safe passageway in the snow around the exterior of the windows to be replaced and set up scaffolding. They've also had a suitable dumpster delivered to the job site ahead of time so they can dispose of remodeling debris as it's generated. Inside, they make sure the homeowner has removed all furniture, pictures, and personal items from the work area. Starting at the front door, they cover the floor in their work area with drop cloths to help prevent any damage. When they load in, they're careful not to bang into walls and woodwork and to place all installation tools and materials on the drop cloths. Before removing the old windows, they check the new windows to make sure they have the units specified for the job inspecting each window unit for damage or missing parts that would hold up installation. They also double-check all measurements and job-related paperwork for any pertinent information or special installation notes. Everything checks out, so they move outside to begin removing the old windows. 
On this job, the first step is to remove the flower boxes by unscrewing them from underneath the windowsill and setting them aside in a safe place. Working as a team, they remove the aluminum storm windows and all of the wide board trim around the entire perimeter and center mullion of the window, taking care not to damage the vinyl siding. They're careful to preserve the existing black felt building paper and verify that there's no existing metal flashing at the head of the window. As part of the water management strategy, new metal flashing will be added at the head during the replacement window installation. Next, they remove the old counterweights by cutting the weight cords. From the interior, they begin by scoring the paint line between the back band and the wall with a utility knife before removing any inside trim. It's important to score the entire perimeter, as this helps minimize damage to the plaster under the trim. Using a small utility pry bar, they carefully remove the wide board trim and back band around the window, working slowly and methodically around the entire perimeter to minimize damage to the lath plaster. They're not concerned about cracks or breaks in the existing window trim since it's not being reused. Next, they use a pry bar to remove the inside stops, the apron, and the stool. Once the interior trim is removed, they discover that the plaster and lath butt up directly to the old window frame. They carefully remove the plaster that overlaps the old frame around the entire perimeter, being very careful not to disturb any of the plaster that won't be covered up by the new trim. They also run a reciprocating saw around the frame to cut any nails that may be holding the frame in place. Then they slip out both bottom sash to lighten the weight of the twin units. With one installer on the inside of the house and the other outside, they carefully tip the old window out of the rough opening and immediately dispose of it in the dumpster. Next, they clean the rough opening and prepare it for the new window units. They cut the old lath back to the studs using a reciprocating saw and make sure there are no old nails or screws sticking out. They use a vacuum to remove any dust and debris. Then they inspect the rough opening for any damaged or rotted wood. When rot or damage is found, the wood must be replaced before installation can proceed. Next, they lay out the rough opening to accommodate the homeowner's desire to maintain the home's 1920s Dutch colonial style, which features a center mullion and wide board casing. To accomplish this, they glue and nail one 2x4 along each side of the rough opening, followed by two 3 quarter inch filler boards to bring the rough opening out to the proper dimensions. They create the center mullion by building up a post with two 2x4s and a 3 quarter inch filler board and toenail the top and bottom of each stud, making sure the post is plumb. Then they check level and square. Next, they check each rough opening to make sure it's square by measuring diagonally across upper left to lower right, and upper right to lower left corner. Measurements must be within one-eighth of an inch. Every remodeling and replacement project is unique, and proper water management techniques need to be assessed on a project-by-project -project basis. The water management technique you're about to see is the best practice for this particular installation. The goal of proper water management is to shed water by layering materials in such a way as to drain the water downward and outward. For this installation, the first layer is a beveled piece of siding installed at the sill with the slope angled to the outside of the house to create positive drainage. This beveled siding was taken into consideration when sizing the window units. Next, aluminum flashing is fabricated by hand or with a brake to fit around both window sills in one complete piece. It's installed underneath the beveled siding, caulked liberally around the edges, and nailed into place. Additional pieces of flashing are fabricated and layered, shingle fashion, over the top of the sill flashing, working up each side of the head jamb. The installers run a reciprocating saw along the top of the head jamb between the siding and the sheathing so they can slip in the final piece of head flashing underneath the black felt paper. Finally, they form a pan at the sill by applying a flex wrap adhesive membrane barrier over the angled sill and partially up each side. 
The flex wrap should overlap the metal sill flashing, and the metal sill flashing should overlap the felt paper, shingle fashion, to ensure proper drainage. Additional water barrier material will be added, but not until after the window units are installed. Now they're ready to install the windows. The installers remove both bottom window sash, being careful not to mar the pre-painted interior. Their goal is to install both window frames as one unit. Removing the sash will lighten the load and make insertion much easier. After the sash are removed, they turn both window units upside down and attach the frames together with an auxiliary subsill run across the entire bottom length of both window frames. This heavy subsill helps maintain the character of the 1920s Dutch colonial home by providing a sill horn termination point for the three and a half inch wide board side casing. Next, they apply silicone sealant to the rough opening at the side jams and head, which will be behind the installation flange in the window. From the outside, they lift both units into the rough opening, being careful not to stress the auxiliary sill. They check each unit for plumb, level, and square, and make any necessary adjustments before temporarily tacking the windows in place using one and three quarter inch roofing nails. Then they reinstall both bottom sash to help solidify the window units and make final adjustments easier. Next, they insert shims behind the side jam between the unit frame and the rough opening and check the reveal between the sash and frame. They make any final adjustments to the frames in the rough opening and double check that the units are still plumb, level, and square. Then they finish securing the unit to the rough opening using coated one and three quarter inch roofing nails through the installation flange, spacing the nails in every other hole. Next, they trim off the excess shims and insert backer rod at the sill, sealing it along the leading edge with silicone sealant, creating a back dam. Finally, they insulate around the perimeter with a non-expanding foam sealant. Outside the house, the unit must be properly flashed and sealed for protection against water and air infiltration. To accomplish this, our installers apply flashing tape over the installation flange at the sides and center, overlapping the flashing tape at the sill. Then they finish by applying flashing tape over the installation flange at the head, overlapping the flashing tape at the sides and center. The exterior trim is being replaced with a low-maintenance vinyl product supplied by a third party that can be cut just like wood. For this job, the vinyl trim is ripped to width and cut to length to replace the wide board trim along the top, center mullion, and along both sides. There's even a vinyl crown molding profile and backer band which can be used to recreate the original trim detail across the top and along the sides. To complete the exterior trim application, they caulk around the two sides and head between the trim and the window and between the trim and the vinyl siding, leaving the sill area uncaulked to allow for drainage should water seep behind the assembly. The first step in applying the new interior trim so that it matches what was in the home originally is to attach new extension jams. The installers use screws and nail guns to minimize pounding on the old walls and plaster. They apply a new stool using screws from underneath so it won't show. Then they attach new wide board trim at the center mullion, the sides, and at the top, and glue and attach the apron. To complete the interior trim application, they miter and attach back band at the sides and the top. After all trim is applied inside and out, the installers thoroughly check the job over, filling any nail holes and touching up any nicks or scratches in the trim and adjacent walls. They take the time to do a thorough final cleanup. Research has shown that an installer's failure to clean up the work area after finishing a job is often a customer's number one complaint. Your customers will appreciate the extra effort. And because you installed Anderson quality products, they'll enjoy replacement windows that are low maintenance, energy efficient, and easy to clean. The Anderson 400 series Woodwright double hung window. Custom sizes to within one eighth of an inch. The ideal choice for your customers who want full frame replacement windows. 
to learn more, to find detailed installation instructions, or to find an Anderson dealer, visit AndersonWindows.com.